Wasabi wallet. Unfairly private. Storing and securing your Bitcoin is very important. You do not want to go just leaving it on any internet connected device, especially if it is your long term savings and it is a large amount of funds, especially for yourself. Uh, and so many lean towards utilizing hardware wallets to store their Bitcoin effectively offline, keeping the keys to their money offline in a non-internet connected device. Now others move to uh, even a step further utilizing something called multi-signature schemes. This is where you rely on more than a single device or more than one set of keys in order to move your funds. So you could have multiple devices and you could utilize those devices and perhaps require two out of the three devices in order to approve a transaction. Today we're going to be taking a look at Caravan, open source multi-signature software put together by Unchained Capital in conjunction with a variety of devices from Ledger uh, to put together and utilize a multi-signature Bitcoin storage scheme. I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions and this is your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin. Before we dive in, of course, I want to give a shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services. Now, I've been using these guys and working with them for well over a year now, and I've had nothing but great experiences. The first thing I ever used them for was a Bitcoin back loan. So in my instance, I was in a pinch and I needed to get my hands on dollars, but I didn't want to sell my Bitcoin for a couple of reasons. Number one, that is a taxable event. And number two, I was very worried worried that I would have to buy back in at a higher price. So I was able to deposit my Bitcoin, get a loan in Canadian or US dollars to my bank account within 24 hours. And when I paid all that back, I got back the exact same amount of Bitcoin. Now they do have a couple other offerings. They've got their Bitcoin and USDC savings accounts where you can earn interest on your deposits uh, to a maximum of 10% annually. And they've also got their B2X offering. And this product effectively uses your Bitcoin as collateral to use the same loan mechanism to buy more Bitcoin. And effectively that doubles your Bitcoin on the spot. Now, if you want to check these guys out, there is a link in the show notes down below. And if you utilize that link and opt to get a loan, you will get 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin for free and you'll be helping out the show in the process. Now, secondly, uh, as I said, we're going to be utilizing uh, the Ledger devices for this demo. Okay, so I've got the Ledger Nano S, two of them here, and I've got the Ledger Nano X as well. So if you're looking to do this and you just basically want to replicate exactly what I'm doing, you can use an affiliate link down below. Now, you don't have to have one or the other. You can have both. You can also utilize the Trezor with this. But if you want a simple, quick pack of them, then you can grab them via the affiliate link. They've got three packs of the Ledger Nano X. They've got three packs of the Ledger Nano S and they've got mixes of them. So if you're looking to do that, feel free to click that link. And again, you'll be helping out the show in the process if you do so. With that, let's actually dive into the tutorial. All right, so here we are on the Caravan website, and this is the first screen you're gonna see when you get there. Um, and effectively, all we're looking to do right now is we're gonna set up a wallet. So we're just gonna click on that wallet button up in the top left, and we get to a screen where you have a couple of different options. You've got import wallet configuration. This is if you've already set up a multi-sig wallet with Caravan and you just want to import that and utilize it again. That's where you would do it and we'll see that in a minute. Um, but then you can also set up uh, a new multi-sig scheme from scratch. Now, as I said, we're utilizing the Ledger devices for this. All of these devices are already set up. They can already be used as just a regular single hardware wallet. That means I've already written down the backup seeds, the 12 to 24 word phrases for all of them, um, and they are good to go in that way. If you are unfamiliar with the Ledger Nano S or the X, I do have tutorials for both of those down below in the show notes. So if you haven't done that before and you have no idea how to utilize them, 
it's best that you check out those first. But for those of you that have devices or are familiar with your hardware wallet devices and you wanna just get going, that's what we're doing here today. Okay, so um, if you're setting up from scratch, the first thing you wanna take a look at is over here on the right where it says Quorum. And this is asking you, how many devices do you have and how many do you wanna require in order to successfully send funds out of this wallet, okay? so. Here, the typical one that a lot of people will set up is two of three. You have three devices and you require at least two of them to approve the transaction before it'll be sent. You can set up other schemes. You can move these up and down. Um, another popular one tends to be three of five. So if you have five devices kicking around, sure, absolutely. But um, we're gonna be doing two of three today. So what I need to do first is you're gonna choose extended public key number one, and you can label this. Uh, so I'm gonna label this uh, Ledger Nano S, uh, and this is a special one from Bitcoin 2019. Great event, love that event. So I'm just gonna put uh, 2019 on this one. We'll just label it. Okay, um, and then you have a drop down menu and you're gonna choose your device. There's Trezor, there's Ledger. There's some other ones that we're not gonna dive into right now, um, deriving this from extended public use, whatever. Um, I do believe they're working on implementing uh, support for cold card, which I would really, really love to see. I'd also love to see support for some other devices out there that are working at being very interoperable, things like the Kobo Vault, things like the, uh, the Bitbox 02 from Shift Crypto. I do like those things. They've got Bitcoin only options, but for now, Ledger, Trezor, that's what available is available. Maybe different by the time you see this. Regardless, we're gonna click on Ledger, okay? And at this point, there's a couple little notifications below that say you have to unplug in, or you have to plug in and unlock your Ledger, and you have to open the Bitcoin app. So I've got one plugged in, and it's asking me for my PIN code, so I'm just gonna put that in. Again, it's already been set up. Put in that PIN code. At this point, once I put it in, uh, it's I have to open the Bitcoin app by hitting with two buttons, and then it'll say, application is ready. Okay, so we're good to go. And at this point, I'm going to, I'll just scroll a little bit here, but we're gonna hit import extended public key. I'm gonna see a notification. Oh, I'm not gonna see a notification, we're good to go. Okay, so uh, it imports my extended public key and it has the BIP32 path. Now, it is good to utilize these little copy buttons and paste those into a document for yourself just for safekeeping, just in case anything happens with your normal backup, which we'll do in a minute. Um, not a bad idea to have both the extended public key and the BIP32 path, okay? Um, but we'll get to the other backup in a moment. I no longer need this, unplug, good to go. Same thing, I've got another Ledger Nano S here. I will plug that in. I've got to put in my pin code. I'll do that as quickly as I possibly can. And I've got to open up the Bitcoin app. We're good to go, application ready. Same thing, drop down, choose the Ledger. Again, it gives me those notifications. Hey, if you haven't done this, do this already. Import extended public key, go ahead, all good everything, we can copy these this information and put it into a document. I'm not gonna do that on screen, no need. I'm gonna be erasing this wallet after anyways. Okay, unplug, all done. We're gonna do the same thing. This time I've got the Ledger Nano X. The cord's a little shorter, shorter so I can't really show you what I'm doing, but you got the point with the original one. Same thing, pin code. Open the Bitcoin app. Application is ready. Drop down, choose the ledger, import extended public key. Good, we are set. We have three extended public keys, three BIP32 paths, which are all the same. I could have labeled these two. Again, you get the point, okay? Now, this is important though. Down below, download wallet details. This is a backup of your wallet. Now, you may be thinking, Ben, you have three devices there. You already told me they're set up. You already wrote down the backup phrases for those devices and setting them up. 
what's this other backup? Here's the thing with multisig. If it's set up and you have all the information necessary to access your wallet, yes, you only need two of the three devices to send money out of your wallet. However, if something goes wrong with your, your backup of your wallet in terms of how do I access that wallet? Maybe something happens with the file that you're saving to get a hold or get into Caravan. In order to access this wallet once again, you will need this backup. And if you don't have this backup, you need all three of these devices, okay? Reason being is the way it constructs the wallet is it takes information from each of these three devices and puts it together in a way that essentially creates a map of where your wallet is. If you don't have all of the relevant information, it's kind of like having a key to a vault, but not having a clue where that vault is located on earth or better yet, in the entire universe. That's how difficult it would be to kind of reconstruct a wallet like this. It's just not gonna happen. So you need to actually download this backup. So you're gonna hit download wallet details and it saves as a file known as a JSON file. Okay, good idea to save that on an SD card, have it a couple different places so that if anything goes wrong, you just have that backup file, you can re-upload it you're golden, okay? Also not a bad idea to store this information, but the same information is con contained in this download wallet details file that you've got. Anyways, got that, that's my warning, confirm. Okay, at this point it bumps us to our actual wallet. So it's gonna construct the wallet, get everything ready for us, and then we'll be able to access it receive and send funds. So you can just see it scrolling across the screen here. Um, and then we'll just kind of examine what's in front of us now that we have done all of the setup and we're ready to go. Okay, quick overview of the user interface and what's in front of us. Up top, you've got a Bitcoin balance right underneath my multi-sig wallet or whatever you've named it. You've got wallet actions over on the right, refresh. This is if you know you've got an incoming transaction or something is not showing here and you know there's an update, you can hit refresh and it'll kind of, add, you know, as the name implies, it'll refresh the screen. Um, you can also download that file that we just downloaded again. Um, you shouldn't need to do that because you should have downloaded it and saved it somewhere safe and created a copy of it. But if you do, it's the option is there and you can clear the wallet. And what clearing the wallet means is it clears it from your browser. Um, it does not clear the wallet of funds or anything like that. It will still be accessible if you got that backup and you've got your devices. Okay. Um, but Besides the fact, let's get down below. Down below, you'll have a list of addresses that are actively in use. Uh, if, if you have incoming funds or funds that are confirmed, you will have these addresses listed here. Now, uh, if I want to see addresses that have not yet been utilized, I can hit the little check mark with the zero balance here, and it'll give me a whole bunch of different addresses there. Um, if I uncheck that, they'll go away. And here we see spent addresses. Now, if I tick that, um, I can see, now I've utilized this once before, but um, this shows any addresses that have previously been utilized. So in practicing and setting this up beforehand, uh, I did utilize an address and had money go into and out of it. Now, I did not use the backup file. What I did is I reset up this wallet from scratch with those three devices and it's still the same wallet, okay? So that's what I mean when I say, if you have the three devices and you don't have the backup, you're fine. If you have the backup and you don't have the three devices and you only have two, you're fine. But if you don't have either, you're kind of screwed, okay? If you only have two devices and you have no backup, it's not gonna work out for you, okay? Uh, so anyways, Spent addresses will show any previously utilized address that will not be used in the future because it's bad practice for privacy to reuse addresses. Um, okay, under the receive tab, obviously that will give you a, a fresh address to receive funds to. Um, you can request a specific amount if you prefer and that will change the QR code. You can tap or click on the QR code and it will copy an address that you can then paste into a message or send to anybody. And same thing down below, the address is here and you can click on it or copy it and send it anywhere. 
If you want to use the next address in the sequence, you can also hit next address and that will give it to you. And finally, from the send screen, uh, pretty basic fare. The difference would be in the execution of actually approving the transaction out, but you've got, okay, where are you sending to? How much are you sending? What Bitcoin fee rate are you going to be paying? Do you want this to go through quick or do you care? doesn't matter. Um, and then it'll give you kind of an, an overview and then you can go ahead and sign. Now there is a couple extra things here. If you hit the manual toggle switch over on the right, gives you a little bit of extra stuff to do here. Um, so you can actually pick your UTXOs or the chunks of Bitcoin that come into your wallet um, and you can choose which ones you want to spend from. Again, this all has to do with privacy. If you know where it's coming from and you know where it's going to and you wanna preserve privacy, you would pick specific bits of Bitcoin. Um, but if that's beyond you, then uh, yeah, maybe start learning about UTXOs, okay? And then you can dive into that rabbit hole later. Um, I'm gonna turn that off. We're not gonna be utilizing that right now. And so now that we've kind of seen an overview of what's in front of us, let's actually utilize the wallet. We're gonna receive and we're gonna send. Receiving transactions to a multi-sig wallet is basically exactly the same as receiving transactions to a regular Bitcoin wallet. So for Caravan, we're just gonna to go to the receive screen. Of course, there's an address there. As I said, you can scan that with a mobile wallet or you can click to copy the address above or below, send that to somebody and they'll be able to utilize that information to send you funds. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm utilizing on my phone um, a, a wallet called Blue Wallet, okay? So we're gonna be using this wallet to send funds to the multi-sig wallet here on my screen. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Blue Wallet, I did, of course, do a tutorial on it. I will link that in the show notes. Down below, you can check that out if you're interested in how to use this, but I'm not gonna be diving deep into how this works. Really, I'm gonna be kind of blasting through it quick. So I'm gonna hit the send button, and I'm gonna be sending over about 20 bucks worth of Bitcoin all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scan the address using my phone. Oh, that went quick, wow. <laughs> and I should also probably just confirm so I can see, oh, I don't wanna send 20 Bitcoin. Maybe I should change, <laughs> not that there's 20 Bitcoin in this wallet, but $20, okay? So anyways, I've set that up. I can see $20 going to the address that I've just scanned. It all looks good to me. Fees are a tad high today. I don't know why I do these videos on Mondays. It's always high fees on Mondays, but regardless, uh, if you wanna fix that, you can shoot me a Lightning Network tip after the fact, but let's get this out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna hit next. Everything on the screen looks good to me, uh, and I'm just gonna hit send now, and off that transaction goes, and I should actually get a notification on the screen uh, in Caravan, at least that was my, there we go. Okay, deposit received, a new address should now be available for deposit. Okay, so as soon as I receive funds, I'll get a notification. I can go back to addresses now, and I can see that I have a pending transaction waiting to be confirmed on the Bitcoin network. As soon as it's confirmed, then I will be able to send it out and we'll see how multi-sig works sending out. Also, now that I've received that, if I go back to the receive screen, I'll get a new address that can be utilized. And, uh, and when I send out from this one, eventually it will be listed under spent addresses that will no longer be used, okay? So we'll be back as soon as this transaction is confirmed, and then we'll practice sending out the exciting part of utilizing multi-sig. All right, so our transaction has received a confirmation and we can tell because it no longer is listed as pending here on our addresses tab. Um, and also now that we've received the Bitcoin to that address, if you go to the receive screen, it'll actually be a new address here listed um, if you receive more funds into this wallet, if you care to do so. And so uh, the interesting part about multi-sig is how you actually approve and send out a transaction. And so that's what we are aiming to do here. So we're gonna go over to the send tab on the right hand side and uh, we're gonna construct our transaction. So um, as I said, you can do batch transactions, all kinds of things. You can 
pick your UTXOs. We're just gonna make it as basic as possible so you can see how this works. Okay, so first thing, uh, obviously I need a receiving address. So I'm just, uh, I've got a QR code scanner here. So I'll grab. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I'll just paste that in here. Okay, so we've got our uh, receiving address, same as on my phone, all good. Um, I'm gonna be sending the max amount of Bitcoin here uh, and we'll just leave it at that. I'm not gonna fiddle with the fees or anything. I know they're high, but uh, we'll just move on from there. Okay, and so this gives me kind of an overview. Okay, you're sending to this address. Um, and you're sending this amount as well as your fees are going to be uh, down below. And that all looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead to sign the transaction or if I had any changes to make, I could hit edit and change anything I wanted to. So sign. At this point, because this is a two of three multi-six setup, we need two keys to sign or two devices to sign and approve this transaction. So I still have my Ledger Nano X plugged in, so I'm gonna uh, click down, and that was number three. If I had labeled them differently, then it would show up here, but besides the fact. Okay, so uh, we have that, and what I need to do is, of course, enter my PIN number on the device, as before when we were setting up. And make sure that the Bitcoin app is open, which it already is, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit sign. Now at this point, I'm seeing on my ledger, which again, unfortunately, the uh, the cord is too short. So I'll have to show you with the next one with the longer cord, but it said review output number one. And if I scroll to the side, it shows me the amount of Bitcoin that I'm sending. So it's showing me this number here. That looks to be the same. And then if I scroll to the side, it shows me this address here that it's going to and that looks to be the same and it gives me the option to accept, so I will accept that. Then it gives me the fees, so it gives me this number here, that all looks good, and it gives me option to accept and send, which I will do. And at this point, it shows that I have one signature, okay? Now, in a regular Bitcoin transaction, that approval there would have sent off the transaction to the Bitcoin network, and I would be finished. But I am not finished because this is multi-sig. I need, one of these two other devices at this point to finalize this transaction. Note that I've unplugged this device. I no longer need it because I have the signature necessary. So at this point, I'm going to plug in my other ledger device into my computer. Uh, I'm going to input my pin code as I did before, hopefully as quickly as I possibly can and open the Bitcoin app. Okay, so I've opened everything, pin, all of that is all good. Okay, so at this point, I need to now select the key, and this was the Ledger Nano S 2019. That's why I designated it, so I could tell the difference. Okay, so I plugged it in, I've unlocked it, I've opened the Bitcoin app, I can hit sign now. Okay, now at this point, I'll show you what I'm seeing here. It says review input or output number one, and it shows me the amount of Bitcoin, which is again, that number there. And if I go to the side, it shows me the address, though it is broken up into pieces, I would have to scroll to see the whole thing, but that address there, okay. And then it gives me the option to accept it if I so choose, and I do. Then it gives me the same thing with the fees, looks good, accept and send. And when I do that, I can see I now have signature one and signature two. That all looks good. Um, and now, don't be confused. You have not sent the transaction yet. You have one last thing to do, and that is to click the broadcast transaction button, at which point it will be set out to the Bitcoin network. So don't go closing this tab without doing that. Otherwise, you won't be successful. But I hit broadcast. There's no bells or whistles that happen. It just says transaction successfully broadcast. I can return back to the main screen and I notice a difference now. There's no longer an address sitting here with a balance. If I click on spent addresses, I can see there's the old one that I had and then there's the second one that we just utilized here. And 
If I click spend addresses, that now goes away. Also, as I said before, there's a new receive screen. And let's just take a look on Blue Wallet to see. And I can see that I now have an incoming transaction for the amount that we mentioned before. And that should be confirmed in no time at all. So we have now successfully sent out a multi-signature transaction. Now it could have been any two of these three devices that I have here. It does not matter which. Um, and again, it could have been any variety of, you know, Ledger Nano S, Ledger Nano X, the Trezor One, the Trezor Model T, doesn't matter. And as they implement uh, compatibility with other wallets, you can mix and match as you see fit with this Caravan software. Okay, so there are just two other things that I wanna to touch on before we wrap up here. Number one is, if you clear this wallet or close your browser and it's not kept in the browser uh, history or anything like that, um, if you close this out, expect to have to use that backup file that you downloaded or the one that you would download where you hit this download configuration button. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear that right now. And when I hit clear, it bumps me back to this screen here where we set up. And so if I wanna access my wallet again, I need two possible things, okay? Number one is I need either that file that I downloaded or I need all three of these devices to reconstruct the wallet that I had, okay? So if I don't have that backup configuration file that I downloaded, then I need all three of these just to create the wallet again. If I do have the backup, then I only need two of these in whatever combination uh, I may have, okay? So to import or to utilize that, that file, you just hit import wallet configuration and I can see it right here, it's a JSON file. I open it up, it gives me all the information I had before, including the labels that I put on all these wallets and it all looks good, so I'm gonna hit confirm and it will load up that wallet with all of the history attached to it and any funds that happen to be in there, I will be able to see that information. I can see if I hit spent addresses, those are the addresses that we utilized before. If there were funds in here at this point, if I had that file, I would only need two of the devices to spend from this wallet. Okay, so we have the backup portion of that covered. Now there's one other thing I wanna show you guys I'll just clear this out one more time. And that is in the process of setting this up, you have the option to connect to your own node. Now I run something called my node. I've created a couple videos on how to utilize it. So I created how to actually build the thing from parts and also how to connect a variety of different wallets to your own node. And running your own node allows you to self verify transactions and it helps with uh, various privacy protections in that you're not relying on a third party feeding you information and seeing your information in the process. And so the way you do that is you can scroll down and on the right hand side, it says Bitcoin client. Normally this is default to, to public, which connects to blockstream.info for their node. Um, but if you hit private, then you can see you have three fields you need to enter. You need to enter the URL to your Bitcoin node, you need to enter a username and password. And if you're running, if you're running my node, I'll just kind of show you what that screen looks like. They have a caravan app in, in the actual dashboard. And if you click on it, you'll get this handy little uh, guide here. And basically it says, change the URL to your nodes IP address. So where it says URL here, you would just copy the information that's blacked out here and paste that in. You would change the username to my node and you would change the password to, if you go into the Bitcoin app on the dashboard, there's an RPC password that's provided to you and you just use that password. Once you plunk in that information that MyNode will give to you on the spot, you hit test connection and you should see a green kind of success screen that lets you know that you are successfully connected. So uh, if you're in, if you're running your own node, um, if you're not, I recommend you do, but if you are, then you can connect that here and uh, you can do that utilizing my node or a variety of others if you happen to run something else. And uh, with that, uh, that's pretty much it. Well, I will wrap that up there. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, 
Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, do hit like, subscribe, and share. All of those things really, really do help, so please do them. If you want to help out the show in another way, as I said before, you can hit up the sponsors I mentioned or the sponsor that I mentioned before. That was Ledin.io. There's a link down below. Um, you could grab ledger pack if you're looking to duplicate what we did here there's a link in the show notes down below where you can get some deals on that and again you don't have to use that link but if you do it helps show or you can just use whatever you have kicking around whether you have ledgers or treasures whatever it will work and finally if you really liked what you saw or if you just want to really are feeling generous and you want to help me recoup the fees that I spent making this video, then you can always drop me a lightning network tip at my tippin.me page. And that is tippin, T-I-P-P-I-N dot me slash at BTC sessions. And with that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful evening, a wonderful day, wherever you are. And I will see you next time for your daily session.